as it is written in the book of Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. We know that the gift of wisdom, which the Spirit gives us all at the time of our confirmation, is the ability to see God as God sees them, which is fairly easy if we believe in a God who merely wants us individually to be comfortable and secure. It becomes rather difficult, though, when we want to see things as the real God sees them, not the way we would like them to be. And that's very difficult if it is indeed perfectly possible. And so we need a lot of help. Who is it that helps us? to engage our gift of wisdom and see things the way God wants them to be. That is precisely the definition of a prophet. Sometimes we think that the prophets of old were women and men who could foretell the future. That is not what the prophets of our ancient ancestors did nor what the prophets of today do. Rather, they help us to see things properly or as God sees them. People of old like Isaiah, Miriam, Jeremiah, Deborah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, Anna from the Gospel of Luke, they all help us to see things in a new way and even challenging way. For example, today we heard from the book of the prophet Isaiah, who is giving words of comfort to God's people at the beginning of their captivity in Babylon. He says, Fear not, God will deliver both reward and recompense, and will gather you as a shepherd gathers sheep in loving arms. But just as we find in the book of Isaiah words of comfort and consolation, we also find words of challenge. Isaiah spoke for the poor and the oppressed and spoke out against corrupt judges and princes. So the role of a prophet is at times very challenging. Jeremiah, for example, spoke of the covenant between God and God's people, but reminded them that it is based 
on a constant renewal and even conversion of heart as they turn from false gods and welcome the true God of Israel into their very heart, not merely by building a structure of a temple, but by making their hearts real temples for the living God. This is also what John the Baptist did. He spans the Old and the New Testament, exercising the vocation of a prophet. As we hear today, he too preaches a message of repentance. Prepare the way of the Lord. And he baptized people in the sense of cleansing them. His baptism was not one of Christian initiation as ours is today. His baptism was specifically about putting aside the old self, being washed clean of everything that prevents people from being the people who God envisions them to be. Not all of the prophets are found in the Bible. For example, just recently, in October, we heard words of prophecy from Pope Francis in his encyclical letter, Fratetti Tutti. He reminds us that we are all sisters and brothers, regardless of physical proximity. It's a 43,000 word document that is very challenging on a number of different levels. And just like John the Baptist and St. Francis, Pope Francis tends to shake things up when he writes or speaks. John the Baptist stirred things up by his odd manner of dress and his peculiar diet. St. Francis of Assisi certainly shook things up when he cast off everything, his vesture of prestige and privilege in the town hall for all to see, as does Pope Francis by riding around in a little fiat car and living in a small hotel room. In Fratetti Tutti, Pope Francis reminds the entire human race that people are called to live in harmony with one another in the context of what he sees as a dark world in which clouds are closing in over closed hearts. And so he reaches out so that we might be able to see things how God sees them. For example, how God sees the stranger along the road, our neighbor who is frail, vulnerable, poor, and suffering. How God sees an open world where people are willing to go out of themselves in order to find a fuller existence in one another. How God sees the heart of the world where all people have a right to seek a better existence for themselves and flee the humanitarian crises that threaten them. How God sees a better act of politics as an act of love, an act dedicated to finding solutions to attacks on fundamental human rights. How God invites us to dialogue and friendship where we begin to see the concept of life as an art of encounter with everyone, especially those who live on the world's peripheries, far from the riches and resources to which every child of God is entitled to a fair share. How God invites us to perform miracles of kindness that free us from the cruelty, anxiety, and frantic flurry of day-to-day -day 
life. Did you find any of those ideas discomforting, challenging? That's probably a good thing because that is what prophets are supposed to be because we want to see things sometimes the way we want them to be and not necessarily how God has designed them to become, in part through our intervention. We're now entering the second week of Advent, which we know as a time of expectation, but what is it we're waiting for? Are we waiting for the baby Jesus to be born? That doesn't make any sense. He's already been born 225 years ago. Are we waiting for the final coming in which we will finally see the justice of God? We have no control over that. That is yet to come. The kind of waiting that we are doing now is we're waiting for an imperfect world to be filled with a joyful hope. We're waiting in the same sense as those people to whom Isaiah addressed his words of comfort and consolation and even challenge. We're waiting like the people to whom John the Baptist addressed his call to conversion. One who is mightier than me, one who is greater than I, is coming after me. We're waiting for the people who heard the prophet Anna speak about a child who would bring redemption to all. Pope Francis, like Isaiah, John the Baptist, and Anna, is a prophet for the third millennium. He reminds us that we will only recognize the peace and comfort promised to God's people when we are able to see the face of the one who is greater than all of us in the face of Frateti Tutti, every sister and brother, wherever they may live and whoever they may be.